Hi. Uh, tonight we're going to install on 2016 uh, server. We're just going to go with the basic defaults here. So from the start menu, next, install now. And it'll give us a few options on the start menu. Startup menu. All right, so there's 2016 standard, um, and then standard desktop experience, and then there's data center and data center uh, desktop experience. So if you choose this option here, that's basically a core installation, okay? So it would be like no graphical user interface. And that minimizes your attack surface, so it makes things more secure. It maximizes efficiency in terms of you're not running services that you don't need it, that you don't have to. Um, so if you're going to say set up I, um, IIS or, you know, web server or, you know, some, some basic service where you did not really require a graphical user interface to manage it, then core would be the option. But in this case, desktop experience will actually give you the GUI that you're used to in Windows. And standard versus data center, you know, data center, obviously the licensing is, is quite a bit more, but it gives you more capabilities, more clients and, and things that you can handle. So we're going to go with the standard, and we're going to go ahead and, and set up the desktop experience. So this won't be core, this, this will be a standard installation. And I'm going to click on next, and I will accept the license terms. And then you can do upgrade. If you are upgrading, I'm going to do custom. And I've, un, you know, I haven't allocated any space, but if I wanted to do my partitioning, I could. You know, I could make partitions, and I could, you know, format them and, and set things up first. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use this whole partition. I'm just going to kind of go through real quick. So I'm just going to next, and it'll go ahead and partition it and uh, and format it for us. So, and uh, let's just let it go through the routine here. And now we're here we are on our boot screen and let's go ahead and log in here. And we'll do our first sign in here and log in. Build a local user profile for administrator. Okay, and here is server manager, which you know we can use to get to all the things we want to get to. Okay, after our default installation, um, one of the things I like to do is just kind of customize things a little bit to make it easier to manage. Um, I'm going to add a new toolbar, and in this case, I'm just going to go to you know the environment setting for program data. Microsoft Windows. So this kind of makes like um, a start menu. So it kind of gives you a quick, easy access to all your, you know, your things there. And then I'm also going to go in and add let's search for server manager, file location, and let's do server manager. And let's go find some other things too that I use frequently. So open the file location. Um, control panel, command prompt, um, run. It's up to you. I mean, a lot of people don't, aren't a big fan of shortcuts, but I am. I'm going to grab all those and just kind of paste those in there. Control V. That just kind of gives me like a little, little handy access to shortcuts and menus and things here and here. I just like to do that. 
And next thing here, also I'd like to customize this and make it a little bit easier to read. That's just more my style. So once I install a server product, usually the first thing I want to do is give it a static IP because you don't really want something that's going to provide vital services, you know, a server like a domain controller or a web server or a DHCP server, um, you know, ADFS server, something like that. You, you don't want it changing IPs when IP addresses um, are, you know, released and, and then or they expire and then they're renewed. And depending on what you're setting up, a lot of times it won't let you do it without assigning a static IP. So it's kind of one of the first things that I do after, you know, like, like a post installation task. So um, I'm just going to use the command IP config. And this keyboard here is really horrible and sticky. I need to get a new keyboard. But I'm going to use the all command and I'm going to use the more switch, which will just kind of let, let us pause and go through things and see what's going on. So you can see by default, DHCP has been enabled. Okay. And uh, so we're on DHCP and we've obtained a lease. This is not a, you know, a static IP. It's, it's a leased IP address. So you can see our default gateway. 192.168.11. Our DHCP server is also that. In this case, I'm using you know the router, um, our DNS server. So um, our address here, 10. This is what we want to change and, and make something static. Okay. So in order to do that, and let's keep this information here. We'll need this information to configure a static IP. So I can go to control panel, but I can also go here and just type in um, network and then if I want to go to network and sharing center or network settings and then change adapter settings. And in this case, here's the one I want to configure. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go over here and this is what I want to configure with a static IP. And first off, let's see what's actually available here. So I am, I am 192.168.1.10 and let's try to pick something in that same range. It's a class C. So um, 192.168.1. I'm just going to pick something up high there on the end, but let's make sure we don't get any echo replies. Okay, so there's nothing out there that's on that particular IP address. 192. 168.125. And we're right now we've leased 192.168.110. So let's hop on over and I'm going to configure the static IP 192.168. I always use my 10 key. I always use the number lock, so keep the number lock on. But 192.168.1 and we're just going to do 25 because nobody's there. I'll go with the standard class C subnet mask. You know, we're not going to, you know, change uh, how many bits we're using for subnet. Uh, you know, for the subnet versus the actual network address. The gateway, all right, again, that's going to be the same. So in this case, my default gateway for the router, 192.168.11. And 192.168.1.10. And, and now later, if I were to set this up as, uh, you know, a domain controller with a global catalog server, an Active Directory integrated DNS, I would end up wanting to configure the loopback as one of my DNS addresses, but it's not a domain controller yet. It's it's not even a member server. We don't even have Active Directory yet. This is just a basic installation of 2016. So at this point, I'm going to want to use the DNS server that I'm getting over DHCP. All right. So that's again, that's coming from my router at this point. Very simplistic network. So 192.168.1.10. And one, and if I had an alternate server, sometimes a lot of people even add a tertiary server. So I'm going to click on OK and OK. And I'm going to go ahead and close the network settings. Um, and then the other thing you would want to do is configure a host name, especially you know before you before you upgrade a server to a domain controller, you don't really want to modify the host name. Um, once you set up a domain controller, especially if it's global catalog server or if it's the domain naming master. Remember there's five operations master roles we've talked about so many times before. Um, you, you don't really want to be changing host names after you've promoted something to you know a domain controller. So we want to configure that, but let's just test our IP settings first. 
And so now if we do an IP config, all right, notice that DHCP enabled is no, all right? Notice our IP address is 192.168.125 now, not 10. Um, our DNS is still 192.168.11, okay? And our gateway is still 192.168.11. There's our gateway, all right? So there's our IP addresses. And let's see if we can ping the gateway. So ping 192.168.1.1. Okay, and then we get, we should get four echo replies. Things are set properly. So our static IP is set properly. Um, but our host name, if I were to type in the command host name, this is like a randomly selected host name. So we want to actually give it a host name. I don't know what theme we'll go with here, but if I want to set the host name on my server, then uh, easy way to get to that, I can go to server manager. And I'm going to select local server. This is also where you can join a domain, but we can't do that. We we haven't even set up one domain controller yet, so we don't have we don't have Active Directory yet. But in this case, computer name, and let's go here. And what do we want to call this? We want to call this uh, computer here. Um, let's call this. Um, we will call it the. Dataless. Dataless. Flying too too high, flying too close to the sun. It's still a work group now, but we haven't set up a domain, but I'm just modifying the host name. So dataless. If I spelled that right, I don't know if I spelled that right, but I'm gonna restart computer to apply these changes. And I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer now. And so now I'll have a I have a I'll have a server with a static IP address, and it will have a now a properly selected host name. And things are configured such that now we can actually begin to set up Active Directory and Active Directory services.